Chris's or Kate, 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 Chris, Chris, Chris is arcade. What's up, everybody? Chris here with Chris's Arcade, and I'm so excited about today's episode. Now, I know I haven't posted an episode in a while, but I've been super busy. Uh, I've had a lot of stuff going on with work. I've also just finished a film festival. Uh, matter of fact, we posted our five-minute short film on the YouTube channel, so check it out. It's called Little Renegade, very 80s-inspired. Matter of fact, Mitch Murder did the soundtrack for our film. If you don't know who Mitch Murder is, he did the soundtrack for the hit film Kung Fury. He also wrote the song true survivor for David Hasselhoff for the film. So check that out after you watch this video. Now, I'm not gonna waste any more time because I'm super excited about today's guest. You saw a little sample of him at the beginning of this video. You know him from American Idol, from season six, and he's also still killing it all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you my buddy, Blake Lewis. Blake, welcome to the show, my man. Thanks for having me. So Blake, you were runner up on the sixth season of American Idol, and man, I will never forget watching you on TV. It, it was just something I've, I've never heard before. I mean, that arrangement, bro, I mean, you you were like the Michael Winslow of music, I mean, <laughs> just on a whole new level. I love it, I'll, I'll take it. I love Michael Winslow. Michael, Michael Winslow, low. <laughs> Now, Blake, what did the American Idol experience do for you as far as your music career? Oh, man. <laughs> American Idol opened up every single door. Um, you know, going, traveling to different countries, you know. When I was on the show, it was a lot different than it is now. Uh, and, you know, social media has kind of taken over everyone's life. Uh, in 2007, that wasn't entirely the case. You know, there was, MySpace was huge back then. Um, you know, back then we weren't allowed to post anything. We weren't allowed to have social media. American Idol was like, no. So you were in a kind of a bubble, you know, you were on the show and you couldn't really reach out to fans. So once you got off the show, it was like, whoa, this is crazy. When we went on tour after for the show, it was just like, oh my God, all these people watched it and we were selling out, you know, stadiums, you know, like 20,000 people a night, it was crazy. Um, so. It gave me so many opportunities. I got to travel. I got to meet, you know, tons of fans. I got to record my album because I got signed after the show in, you know, in New York and, you know, where Michael Jackson recorded in L.A. and Henson Studios, which I'm a huge Jim Henson fan. And uh, so I got to record there for like three weeks for the, f the final mixing of my album. It was amazing. So lots of opportunities, lots of great friends and stories, you know. That's awesome, man. Now tell me, what was your favorite performance on American Idol? My favorite performance of myself? Um, it was really, that's really tough. I mean, you know when you feel it on stage. And when I did You Give Love a Bad Name, um, I just had so many naysayers and so many, the producers, uh, the only people that got it were the was the band that I was playing with. You know, I mean, I was taking chances by making, not to me, crazy arrangements. I was just making arrangements on how I would do the song, how I would have done it normally. And no one had stepped out of that, you know, the comfort zone that is American Idol. And I'm, you know, and I don't like to play by the rules. You know, I create my own rules when it comes to music because that's what it's about. You, you give, give up, love, love. And um, so that was a, that was a good one because 
John Bon Jovi didn't even like my arrangement until the next day. You know, I sold like almost 300,000 copies of the song and made him, you know, $300,000. <laughs> so I quick killed it. It's kind of funny. Right on, right on. But man, Blake, I gotta say, my favorite performance by you on American Idol was Virtual Insanity by Jamiroquai. Mostly because Jamiroquai is my man, you know what I'm saying? But dude, the arrangement, it was just stellar, bro. There is no sound, for we all live underground, ground, ground, word. Thank you. I um, I would see. I would have said the first three weeks because they don't do. They don't even do this now on American Idol, and I think it's just kind of it's terrible for the contestants. But when I was on the show, the first weeks, if you made, you know, you you got to the first three weeks, uh, they let you pick your whatever you wanted to sing, and so you get to best represent yourself going into the show, and. Um, you know, I picked Jamiroquai, Keen, and 311, which at the you know at the time were some of my favorite, still are some of my favorite bands. And for me, it's just like, hey, I'm gonna just be me. I'm gonna take this show and look at it as a remix contest. Blake, tell me, at what age did you know that music was like your thing? I already knew it was my thing, like in junior high, but um, it wasn't till I was in this. Uh, boys and girls youth choir a professional choir and we we toured the world and we went to england and wales and that's like where my heritage is from uh so when i got there and we sang at the like international competition um which was like a big deal and and i didn't know it was such a big deal you know i'm just young I'm, i think i was 12 or 13 hanging out with cute girls singing <laughs> And that was it for me. And we got fourth best choir in the world. Wow, dude, that's amazing, man. There's, it's funny that I, I went to my 10 year high school reunion and there's this video of me, my like senior year, uh, like one, the last thing, you know, they capture like little snippets of people like on the last day of school as a senior, like, you know, I was in the, mine was like, like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I'm coming back a rock star in 10 years made it happen so I guess you know, believe in your dreams and I guess that the, the moral of that story is, is like follow you do what you want to do be true to yourself <clears throat> so beatboxing I was doing it subconsciously my whole life um, being a huge fan uh, well a being an only child being a huge fan of Michael Jackson a lot, not a lot of people know that he's a beatboxer. Michael Winslow, what you said earlier, and um, Robin Williams, actually. Um, Mork and, I grew up like on Mork and Mindy, and he uh, he was always like, <coughs> you know, doing you know weird uh, sound effects. And so uh, Robin, Michael Winslow, more the comedians than music, actually. Now let's fast forward a little bit after American Idol. Um, since then, you've put out a lot of great albums. And I mean, dude, selling hundreds and hundreds of thousands of copies, reaching high on the Billboard charts. Blake, tell me, what album are you most proud of? Um, My last album, uh, Portrait of a Chameleon, because I, me and my, you know, engineer did the whole entire thing. And I, and I collabed with some great writers. But other than that, it was really my vision. I started my own record label, Audio Daydream Records. Uh, and it was a journey. It took a, while, it took a while to do because I'm such a perfectionist and I, I'm just starting my next one and it's gonna be completely opposite and more organic and not as, you know, perfect and overproduced. Portrait of a Chameleon is my favorite album by you, bro. And dude, the number one song it's my jam, dude. Retro romance. Let's talk about it. Now 
let's first talk about the music video, man. The inspiration, the cameos, everything, dude. This music video is pure genius. Oh, man. Okay, so this song in general, I had pretty much arranged the whole entire thing years ago, like right at the end of Heartbreak on Vinyl. Um, just up in my studio, I had this melody and so much of it. And I just chopped, you know, crazy sounds together. And, you know, uh, that's what that intro, you know, the intro was like almost mechanical. And I always wanted to do something with that piece. And I would just never was inspired. I was dating this girl that was like, I'm such an 80s girl. Like, you know, you know, you meet these girls like, I love the 80s. And then they don't really know like any bands or any, <laughs> like, why? Because you were born in it and you're just feeling this chick. But anyway, um, and I was like, oh, like, no, I'm an 80s guy. And I'm like, let me see, let me challenge myself. Let me see if I can write. I wrote the song in less than 40 minutes, like the whole thing. And I was, and that was it, you know? And so the music video came together because of this amazing, here right now. Big kid toy and collectible. I like that the pen right here. Uh, it's an amazing toy store, which is now closed, which is super sad. It closed last week, actually. Uh, so the owner, Dave, just amazing guy, and I would come in all the time. Huge knowledge of anything from like the 30s to now, as far as collectibles and music, like huge music guy. Um, anyway, so I was like, hey, what's the chance of me shooting in here? Like, how much? And like, and he's like, you can do it for free on a Monday. Just let me know. And I was like, what? So we got the location. Um, I told my my friend, uh, Nick Pazillo, who directed it, edited it, color, like color corrected. I mean, he did everything. I called my buddy Dennis Haskins, AKA Mr. Belling from Saved by the Bell. Uh, we've done a lot of charity work together. He was stoked. He's like, well, if you do it on this date, I can do it. And I was like, it's done. Okay, we're doing it on that date. <clears throat> I called my good friend, Rick Malambri, who was the lead in Step Up 3, who also lived like four blocks away. And I was like, dude, can you be the douche, douchey, like high school boyfriend? Um, and then third, uh, I used to eat at this place called BB's and this waitress was just super cute. And we oh, would always talk. And I was like, can I ask her out? And I asked her out like way too late just like my style is like six months too late and she's like oh i got a boyfriend but yeah i'll do your music video so she agreed and then it came together <clears throat> when i was at an 80s party like you know this is a month before and my friend's friend had this like the perfect ducky outfit you know and uh and i was like you got it and he's an amazing photographer so he came was in the video and uh, took behind the scene photos. So all the photos that are actually good from that music video shoot he shot when he wasn't on screen with me. And then we, you know, got an incredible Hulk, you know, and just friends. My friend Gigi did all the makeup and, and then the night before we wrote the script because we wanted to do this. It's a very big John Hughes tribute. Like the opening is, you know, basically the scene of John Candy and Macaulay Culkin, uh, of Uncle Buck, you know, that's what we were trying to make it. Let's that fast repertoire, you know, going back and forth. But funnest music video, best music video I've ever made was in the top 20 on Rolling Stone. Um, you know, really proud of it. It just came together by the kindness and good hearted people that I love in my life. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really cool. Big Kid's been on so, like many television shows and, and stuff. And, to this day, they're like, that was the best thing we've had in our store. And so it's, now it's, you know, encapsulated in time and uh, they'll forever have that as well as I. As I. <laughs> <laughs> <Doggy>. <laughs> 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 <laughs>